Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm so happy to be here for the TEDx NYU Shanghai. It's my first experience here. Actually, months later, when I got the invitation, I'm quite surprised. As you can imagine, usually people call me for concerts or music events. But this may be one of the first times that I realized symphony does matter. Because people not only want to listen to the music, but also want to listen to its story. Well, I don't know how many people here have ever been to a symphonic concert. Would you please raise your hands? Wow, congratulations, that's a lot. So actually, symphony is not that far away. It had already entered into our daily life. For example, when you go to the cinema, merged into the story, maybe you will not realize that the music you heard in the movie was recorded by an orchestra. You attend your friend's wedding. You heard those famous wedding march. You may not easily realize that the music is composed by Wagner or Mendelssohn. Game music, ceremony music, TV live show, advertisement. There are so many examples. So from now on, if you pay a little more attention to the sound that surrounds you, you may find, wow, symphonies everywhere, much more than we can realize. We all know that symphony is not originally from China. But the interesting thing is those famous Chinese compositions, they are all orchestral works. For example, the Ode to the Red Flag, the famous piano concerto, Yellow River, and most famous butterfly lovers, the violin concerto, right? Beautiful melody. So actually, the symphony has already taken very important role in Chinese culture. But how this Western style art entered China and became part of it, and how did it happen? So the story traced back to 1860s. At that time, Shanghai attracted the residences from all around the world. Many European people, they traveled to Shanghai and chose the city as their residency place. Along with them, they brought the lifestyle and their cultural traditions here. At the same time, European musicians brought the classical music here. Many of them chose to stay in Shanghai when they were old. So in 1879, People saw a short message in an English newspaper. It's the North China Daily News. It declared that the city now had its own public band. Actually, this public band is the very first orchestra of China. Years later, the Shanghai Municipal Council took over the whole orchestra and changed the name to Shanghai Municipal Orchestra. Starting from then, Chinese young people in Shanghai studied the music with those orchestra musicians, which opened the curtain for engagement of the classical music and Chinese culture. The earliest program bill reserved is from 1911. It showed that the orchestra played Beethoven Symphony No. 3. The music from Weber, Schubert, Liszt, almost the same as being held in Europe at that time. Even though the classic music was performed here, that didn't mean it had already entered the real Chinese lifestyle. Why? Because the musicians are foreigners. The audiences were foreigners too. So until 1920s, 
the orchestra opens its regular concerts to local Chinese audience. It started to organize concerts with those talented Chinese soloists. So because of the orchestra, symphony had its first root in Shanghai and later got expressed, spread to the whole country. Because of the orchestra musicians, Shanghai city got the conditions to open the very first conservatory of music in China. This orchestra is the first orchestra to introduce the Western music, Western classical music to China. And at the same time, it is first orchestra to play Chinese piece. So you may ask, so why, why I'm here? Yes, where is the orchestra, right? It's, as you think, yeah, it's Shanghai Symphony Orchestra. We are 138 years old. It is a very long history for an orchestra. Compared with the other world-class orchestras, Shanghai Symphony Orchestra is still considered to be one of the oldest orchestras in the world. <laughs> After sharing with you the history of the symphony in China, I would like to talk about the present situations. In the summer of 2017, there were over 350,000 children applied music granting tests, and the number is growing each year. You may say that, wow, we have a large population for our music future, yes? And how about those professional symphony orchestras? Now, in China, the number of a professional orchestra is over 73 now. Almost double the number in the last decade. But there's another fact. Compared with the large population of China, the concert audience number is still very small. Some people said, oh, symphonic music is no longer belongs to our times. But I disagree. As I mentioned, people use symphonic music everywhere. People, so many people study or learn music means the audience need those only good music. They even want to find those untraditional, fresh, unusual things in those traditional art. They want something meaningful for them. That's why nowadays people need more interactive, participating much more than the other times, especially for young person. Fortunately, symphony again on the way to encounter our times. Our composers use different elements and make some very different music. So I would like to show you some video. First, Cacheto. The city has lots of cats for them. I am one of them. So this piece actually, for me, it's so touching. Let's try the cat. Actually, it's the piano solo. The cat's name is Nora. <laughs> Shanghai Symphony Orchestra uh, introduced this piece in 2013, Mesa Festival. 
music festival is in a crossover class, classical plus festival for young people in the summertime each year. So the next piece is Symphonic Chocolate. Uh, the piece has four movements. Each movement represents you know, different flavor, the four flavor of chocolates. So on the concert day, the audience will get a very special program book. It's not a book, it's a box of chocolate with the four flavor chocolate inside. That means the audience can taste each flavor while listening. This is the piece is ping pong concerto. Ping pong is a very common sport in China. So in 2015, Shanghai Symphony Orchestra commissioned the ping pong concerto and premiered it in that year. So let's see. That means the soloist is not a cat, but it's not a musician as well. They are ping pong players, very professional. This is last two minutes of the last movement. They keep those ping pong boys a souvenir that day. <laughs> so you can see that symphony concert can be very unusual and creative. Besides, the music education can also be a very important way for audience to get involved in the development of symphony music. Classical music is very helpful in creativity. Those, uh, those experiences play together on the stage in an ensemble or in an orchestra is irreplaceable. In the group, people learn how to listen to each other, how to cooperate and the play. They encounter different cultures, ideas, learn how to understand the music from different angles. Eventually, the encounter presents the complete music. So all these are very helpful and useful for people's future. Let's see some photos about the education projects. Here is the Misa Festival Orchestra. This project is for those very young people. You can see the first picture. Yeah, the little boy even shorter than his instruments, right? <laughs> and this is a children's outdoor opera. 
The name is Noah's Flood. The whole production was casted by children. Children's choir, children's orchestra, children's uh, uh, reporter, and even the audience is served by the children. And this is the project the Shanghai Symphony Orchestra cooperated with Lincoln Center, the young composer's studio. Those young people who never tried to compose music, never learned to compose music, made their miracle in seven days, only seven days. They were inspired in different way to compose their own music and got the chance to premiere their music in our stage by the musicians from New York Philharmonic and Shanghai Symphony Orchestra. So, besides, you may ask, how about the traditional orchestra season concert? Of course, those maestros, soloists, great musicians, will always bring you the most luxury music in the world. In our days, with the development of the science, acoustic designers will present you more and more fantastic halls. This is Shanghai Symphony Hall, located in middle Fuxing Road. It opened in 2014. For audience, the experience gets more and more delicate. But some may say, oh, nowadays, more orchestra build their own digital hall so people can sit at home and choose those concerts, you know, even in other countries. In China, we can even watch in and typing at the same time. We call it bullet screen, right? A very interesting for all fun. Oh yes, it really for all fun, but it's only a kind of fun. The digital hall, just like a recording, when you play it, it will be always the same. But the live concert is different. More than 80 musicians they gathering together, play on the stage. You will never hear the same interpretation, even the same piece played by the same orchestra. So it's, it's just like, you know, the nail gun will never replace the hammers completely. The car will never replace the bicycle completely. People need different things, but those were in nature will never be out of date. Symphony always bring us the top enjoyment. The on-site experience will also, you know, deliver to you the organic hours out of this disturbing, huge information world. So in the end, I would like to say that in a metropolitan city like Shanghai, every day you will find so many concerts. So I strongly recommend you to walk into a concert hall because the classic music is something you cannot keep for yourself. You need to experience on site, to be there at the moment. That's the charm of it. After trying those crossover things, activities, you need to at least try once. That's the treasure of human beings. Symphony makes us to encounter different cultures of the world and let the world encounter China. It brings us the endless creativity and the healthy quality of life. So together with our music director Long Yu, Maestro Long Yu, we would like to welcome you to Shanghai Symphony Hall. The oldest orchestra in Asia will always be there for you to remind why symphony matters. Thank you.